are going to be beginning a unit on figure drawing. And in order to do that, we need to talk about the proportions of the human figure and also talk about a, a new skill set to us called gesture drawing. Uh, when we work with figure drawing, it means we are drawing the entire human figure uh, from the head to the the feet. Um, figure drawing is a, a skill and it's something that a lot of times people sort of struggle with um, and so we're going to kind of give it a bit of structure and the first thing we're going to talk about is um, proportions. So a typical figure and we're going to talk about adult figures as soon as we talk about children's figures the, the proportions go all out the window. So we're talking teenager and above is seven and a half heads tall. If we look at where the figure could fold in half, it would be at the, what we would call the hip or the main body bending point. The fancy figure drawing name for this is pubic synthesis. It is where your legs meet your pelvis. Um, the first, point or the quarter point at from the top is at your chest or just under your armpits um, and the three quarter point is typically at about your knee. Um, we usually measure uh, the figure um, while we're working and I will show you how to do that um, as we start making figure drawings ourselves but it's important for us to think about this um, figure drawing that we, if we're using the head as a measurement tool, and that's typically what we do when we draw a figure, we have some really regular proportional and comparative figure marks that we can make. And so you can see that that first head is the actual head of the figure. The next head down, if we're using the head as a measuring tool, sits um, at about the, the nipple or the underarm area. The third head will hit at about the belly button. That fourth head, again, is the, the halfway point or sits at what we call pubic synthesis or the hip, that main body bending place. The fifth head measures down to about mid thigh. That sixth head is going to be just hit just under your kneecap. The seventh is going to hit that outside your ankle bone. And then that half, a half a head, is where your feet sit. Um, we can use that comparative measurement um, of the human head inside any figure drawing. And that is how we'll kind of check our proportions in a figure drawing. Um, the other thing to think about is that the body width, if we uh, talk about the body from side to side, we are um, looking at a shoulder width of three heads apart. So if we look at that illustration of the human figure on the right hand side of the screen, we can see that we would have room for there to be three heads across the shoulders. That is um, something that happens fairly often is the shoulders don't get drawn wide enough. So that's a very typical mistake with an early figure drawer that you wouldn't draw your shoulders quite wide enough. Another mistake that happens fairly frequently is uh, arms don't get quite drawn quite long enough. So um, we will talk about that as well. Noticing that the arms fall past that kind of half body bending place is important. We are going to be learning a new drawing style called gesture drawing. Now, there are as many different ways to gesture draw as there are artists, and you have to kind of find the drawing style that works best for you as we move into gesture drawing. Um, I will recommend that you try kind of more than one different type of gesture drawing just to kind of find your best gesture drawing jam. But here, 
are kind of uh, some of the four main gesture drawing types. So we have that first uh, gesture, which you're probably familiar with. You probably learned how to draw figures like in elementary or middle school using ovals. Um, so we call that kind of a tight gesture where you want to affix shapes to the main body portions. I find that that takes the longest, so I don't necessarily recommend that particular style of gesture drawing. You can also use primarily straight lines when you draw with gestures. So that's the next example there. So sort of a modified stick figure sort of a thing, if you will. Um, you can uh, modify that linear gesture quality by using uh, scribbles. Um, so the lines are a little bit more organic in nature versus um, just straight lines. And then uh, we can use the side of a material and think main like body masses and do some shading as a gesture. So if we look at a sheet of gesture drawings done using shapes or that kind of tighter gesture drawing, um, we see that like main body bending places are drawn in with circles and those circles have gotten connected uh, to create the form of the figure. If we look at a full sheet of scribble, more scribble style gestures, you sort of see a hint at sort of a skeletal structure with a bit of a rib cage involved. And um, so here we see the rib cage in, involved. And um, but we we have the the form of the entire figure. The important thing to remember when we're talking about gesture drawing, we're talking about a drawing that takes um, under two minutes. Most of these would probably be 30 seconds to a minute long. So the goal when we work with gesture drawing is to get the entire figure drawn as fast as possible. Notice we don't know if these are men or women. We don't know what kind of clothes they're wearing, but we do recognize um, their motion. We can see that one of them is stretching. We can see that one is playing golf. We can see that one is batting a ball or playing tennis. So it is the motion and the form of the figure in its entirety uh, that becomes important when we're talking about gesture drawing. Um, these are kind of a combination of a scribble style with a straight line style and they start to have some shading. Again, remember that these uh, gesture drawings would take roughly a minute to two minutes at the most. So we need to work on practicing quick capture of the entire figure and that's an, going to be a new skill for us. You can also work with ink. Um, or a water soluble material. So you do have some water solubles in your drawing kit. So we'll talk about that later this week too, as we work with our gesture drawings that uh, there are some varieties of different tools that we can use to kind of facilitate this quick drawing style. Um, those washes then very traditionally are finished with some charcoal. So uh, gesture drawing has kind of a strong tradition in uh, art classes and in being an artist. Um, and the, the key to remember with gesture drawing and figure drawing is that um, you work as long as you have time. So if I have 30 seconds, I maybe get the number one illustration done there with uh, a hint at the whole body. The head is there. Uh, it's kind of a stick figure. If I then have another minute, I start to block in more of that form. Again, I can see that whole pose. If I still have another minute or two, I'm starting to hint at more of the figure. I have some more details. If I have more time, notice how I continue to work on that gesture drawing. We now recognize um, more details on that figure, it is important for us to recognize that uh, figure drawing is time-based. I don't quit until my time is done. 
Um, then from that point, so this end figure here, we would, if we still continue to have time, add close on over the figure. So it's super important to remember that gesture drawing starts light. We start loose, we start with the entire figure. And as we have time, we add details like clothing and other identifying features. Um, if we have enough time or with enough practice, we get to the point where we go back to the idea of a contour line drawing. So um, I would say that these uh, little figure illustrations take between five and 10 minutes each, but they would each have begun with a very quick gesture drawing. Um, so this is kind of the, the, the philosophy that we're working up to as we begin to practice our gesture drawing and our figure drawing skills. Here are some examples from an artist sketchbook um, done at like an outdoor jazz festival. And these images would have been done very quickly. Um, I would say under five minutes each. Um, you can see that we recognize clothing. They've got some shadows worked in, um, but it is primarily the main gesture of the figure itself. Some more examples uh, from a figure drawing class. Uh, these, uh, the one on the left is done using a color crayon. Uh, the one on the right is done using uh, an ink, uh, a paintbrush with some ink in it. So we will do uh, a variety of materials as we move into our figure drawing unit here today. Here are some of the easiest mistakes uh, that get made with new figure drawers. One is if you draw the head too large, you won't have room for the entire figure on your page. So remember thinking ahead to make that first oval and the entire figure should be about seven and a half heads tall. Uh, it's very common also that hands and feet get drawn too small. Hands and feet are the exact same height as a human head. You can test that with your own uh, body by placing your hand on the bottom of your chin and you will see that you cover your face. Uh, arms and legs very often get drawn too short. Remember that legs are half of your body's full height. And arms come to mid-thigh when they're hanging down by your sides. And if you stretch your arms out side to side, that is as long as your figure is tall. Uh, also, another common uh, thing that happens is bodies end up looking flat or boxy. Remember that everything on a human body is curved. We are built of curved shapes and curved lines. And when we are drawing uh, a human figure, we want to remember that those curves will come into play. We will uh, begin our, our figure drawing unit by making a controlled uh, measure. So I'm gonna teach you how to measure um, a human figure and we will draw a human figure together um, and after that point we will practice our gesture drawing skills so you're going to be working primarily in your sketchbook um, we will then use some of those sketchbook illustrations in a finished piece of like mixed media artwork next week uh, but this was the introduction to figure drawing both proportions and gesture <laughs>